Distance accumulation is used to calculate or determine a cost surface that you can subsequently use for things like least cost path analysis. It's a compound tool. It has a lot of inputs. Not all of these are relevant for cost surface calculations when you're using these for LCPs or for Euclidean distance calculations. That is what is indicated by the optional parameters that you see on your screen. When you are doing distance accumulation, you have to think about what you are using to determine the cost from. That is your input raster or feature source data. So where must the cost radiate outward from? The distance accumulation raster, the output, is what you are calculating. That is the name that you will give it. The input barrier raster or feature data is if you have a layer or a feature in your map that is something that you cannot cross over, for example, a river or a bridge that is currently not open, an impediment that you can't get past. The input surface raster, if you are doing cost surface calculations, would be your DEM. The input cost raster is the raster you calculated in a previous step which assigns a weighting across the surface for your final cost surface or accumulation surface that you are calculating. Then you have the back direction raster that you need if you want to run something like LCPs because you want to know where you're coming from. And then you have the distance method as well. Here it can be either planar or geodesic if you're using quite a large area then you can consider using geodesic. This is now when you have layers that are already in a planar projection, and it's a very large area that where you should consider the curvature of the Earth, otherwise you just use planar. So how would this work? It's quite simple. I'll populate these fields now. Importantly, when you're running this tool, you need to think about the extent again. If I want to run an accumulation surface, a cost accumulation surface across my entire map extent, I need to ensure that my environment is set to that. The processing extent must be set to the maximum extent. For example, if your surface raster is a DEM, then set your, your extent here to that of the DEM. That means your output, once you have run this tool, the accumulation and the direction rasters, will actually cover the extent of the DEM. If you do not do that, then you will be limited to the source features. You can have additional inputs. These are optional. For example, you can set a minimum initial accumulation cost and also what kind of type it is. Then you can have a maximum accumulation cost if you want to only calculate the surface to a certain cost expended. For example, a three hour travel or a 2000 calorie expenditure or a time travel of 20 minutes, anything like that. You can also apply multipliers to costs. If you have a constant multiplication per the cost across the surface, and then you can also specify the travel direction. You can say travel to source or travel from source. This relates to your input here at the top. So you can create the cost surface so it actually models the cost outward, the accumulation outward from the source. So here, if you'd like to set that from the homesteads outwards, you can set it. Otherwise, the default is outward. Otherwise, you can also do the inverse, where you travel to the source across the whole extent that you're investigating. If you have a vertical raster, so you have that values, you can put these in as well. It allows you to account for slope, those kind of aspects. You can also have a relative horizontal movement raster and additional outputs um, that are related to your specific tool that you're running. For example, if you say the source location raster and the source direction raster, it is a raster that is output, where its output shows you exactly where the nearest source is. So it creates little neighborhoods for each of those specific sources.